tonight, several breaking stories on this Friday night. U.S. fighter jets scrambled over the U.S. A high-altitude balloon intercepted flying over this country. The balloon spotted over Utah flying above the U.S. at 40,000 feet. Where is it from? Who is behind it? Mary Bruce standing by with late reporting at this hour. Also breaking as we come on tonight, the jury's decision just in. In the case of the NRA and its longtime former leader, Wayne LaPierre, the jury's decision now in. Tonight, Donald Trump says he supports IVF after widespread backlash after the Alabama Supreme Court determined frozen embryos should be considered people. Tonight, the Biden campaign arguing this is because of Trump and his picks for the Supreme Court overturning Roe. The young nursing student found dead after jogging on campus at the University of Georgia. There is news just in tonight of an arrest, Steve Osinsami, in Georgia. The urgent search at this hour for a missing American couple disappearing in the Caribbean. What authorities found on the boat, saying the boat was stolen. Tonight, President Biden hitting Russia with more than 500 major new sanctions after the death of Alexei Navalny. James Longman inside Ukraine tonight. Back here in the U.S., in New York City, the urgent manhunt, more than a dozen suspects after violent attacks in Times Square. Three members of a university swim and diving team have been killed after a horrific crash. The CDC health alert tonight about a nationwide spike in cases of the highly contagious norovirus, where it is now hitting hardest. And the landing on the moon tonight, the first image just in, and what we have just learned about the lander itself on its side. You'll see the first image. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. And we begin tonight with the breaking news. U.S. fighter jets scrambled in the skies over the U.S. after reports of a high-altitude balloon flying over the western United States. Tonight, a U.S. official now confirming that NORAD aircraft intercepted the balloon some 40,000 feet over Utah. The balloon described as about 50 feet tall, carrying a small payload about two feet square. The incident, of course, coming a year after that Chinese surveillance balloon was spotted over the U.S. and then shot down off the coast of South Carolina days later. Tonight, of course, the main question, who is behind this balloon? Authorities releasing a statement just a short time ago, and our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, leading us off tonight. Tonight in the skies above the western United States, NORAD sending up fighter jets to track a high-altitude balloon, flying at 43,000 to 45,000 feet. An official tells us the balloon is some 50 feet tall with a two-foot payload, its contents unknown, and they do not believe the balloon is being steered remotely. The military first spotting it over Utah. It is now drifting east. No word on who sent the balloon, where it's going, or what its mission might be. The Biden administration keenly aware it comes just a year after a Chinese spy balloon was spotted flying clear across the country. President Biden ordering it shot down off the coast of South Carolina. That balloon was much larger than the balloon currently drifting across the country. Its payload alone was the size of three buses. Tonight, the origin of this new balloon unclear, but officials telling us it does not pose a threat to national security. Still a lot of questions over this. Let's get right to Mary Bruce live at the White House tonight. And Mary, another balloon, of course, spotted over the U.S. These fighter jets scrambled, as you just reported. So what's the White House saying about this tonight? Well, David, for now, they are continuing to closely track and monitor this. They've determined that as of now, this does not pose a risk to flight safety. And we're told NORAD and the FAA are closely coordinating to make sure it stays that way. David. All right, Mary Bruce tracking this into the night. Mary, thank you. We're going to turn to the other breaking news at this hour involving the NRA and longtime former leader Wayne LaPierre. Just a short time ago, a jury holding the National Rifle Association liable for financial mismanagement and that its longtime leader, LaPierre, quote, corruptly ran the NRA. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, now. Wayne LaPierre. Tonight, a jury in New York says Wayne LaPierre, the face of the National Rifle Association for three decades, is liable for what they called a culture of self-dealing, spending millions of the NRA's money on private plane trips for himself and his family, including eight trips to the Bahamas and gifts ranging from the use of a 107-foot yacht to African safaris. Do you regret any of your actions, Mr. LaPierre? LaPierre, who announced his resignation from the group before the trial started, sat stone-faced in the front row as the verdict was read. 
The trial cast a spotlight on the 150-year-old organization that was founded in New York City to promote rifle skills, but grew into a political powerhouse that influenced national gun policy and elections. New York Attorney General Letitia James, who brought this lawsuit against the NRA, just issued a statement saying LaPierre and a senior executive with the NRA must pay $6 million for abusing the system and breaking our laws. She called it a culture of corruption and greed, David. All right, Pierre Thomas, on this breaking development tonight as well. Pierre, thank you. We turn tonight to the race for president and this deeply personal issue of IVF and what comes next for millions of women in this country. Tonight, Donald Trump says he supports IVF after widespread backlash after Alabama's Supreme Court determined frozen embryos should be considered people. Tonight, the Biden campaign arguing this is because of Trump and his picks for the Supreme Court overturning Roe. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze in Alabama again tonight. Tonight, after public outcry, Alabama's attorney general saying he has no intention of prosecuting IVF families or providers. But the state's biggest hospital, one of three major clinics stopping IVF, tells ABC it can't commit to restarting treatments until the state Supreme Court reconsiders its opinion that determined frozen embryos are people or until legislation is passed, leaving distraught families with no other choice but to wait. I mean, it's not luxury in here. Gabby Price and her husband downsized to this camper van to save money for IVF. Gabby taking a job just for its fertility benefits. Now, with so much uncertainty, they're looking to start IVF out of state. I'm terrified to have embryos here. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what, what sort of rights we're going to have over the embryos that we create. The state's Republican governor says she's now working on a solution with GOP lawmakers to protect IVF access, including a proposed bill clarifying an embryo is not a child until it's implanted in a woman's uterus. A uh, fertilizing uh, egg or embryo uh, has potential life. It's not actual life. That question now a flashpoint on the campaign trail. Tonight, Donald Trump weighing in for the first time, saying he supports IVF, and he's calling on the Alabama legislature to find a solution. We want to make it easier for mothers and fathers to have babies, not harder. The Biden campaign accusing Trump of trying to run away from his own record on abortion and IVF, saying this would not have happened if Trump didn't appoint three Supreme Court justices who ultimately voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, something Trump has taken credit for. Those justices ruled to end Roe v. Wade. They ruled to end Roe v. Wade. Reproductive rights advocates and women relying on IVF had feared that the fall of Roe would open the door to states further restricting reproductive rights. They just were like, here's our opportunity to do something that we've been trying to do for quite a long time. David, on the eve of the South Carolina primary, both former President Trump and Nikki Haley are trying to show that they favor IVF, which has overwhelming public support. Vice President Kamala Harris tonight is calling Trump the architect of the IVF crisis here in Alabama. David. Elizabeth Schulze on this again tonight. Thank you, Elizabeth. We turn tonight to a horrific case, a young nursing student found dead after jogging on a campus at the University of Georgia in Athens. Tonight, news coming in, police have made an arrest. 22-year-old Lakin Riley went for a run yesterday morning. Her body was found just hours later in the woods near the university's athletic fields. Tonight, what investigators are now zeroing in on in ABC's Steve Osinsami with late reporting from Georgia. The University of Georgia is announcing tonight that campus police have made an arrest in the school's first homicide in decades. Earlier today, investigators spent hours at an apartment complex pulling garbage bags from a dumpster and searching for clues that might lead them to whoever killed 22-year-old Lakin Hope Riley. We are obtaining arrest warrants for Jose Antonio Abera, 26 years of age. He lives here in Athens, but is not a U.S. citizen. The young woman was a former UGA student who was studying at a nearby nursing school in Athens, seen here in a school photo. She was out jogging Thursday morning on the UGA campus, but never returned. Police found her body in this wooded area near a lake after a friend reported she was missing. The individual was unconscious and not breathing and had visible injuries. In high school, Riley ran cross country and competed at the state finals. Her former coach tonight is calling her an unselfish individual and says her passion for healthcare science and running are to be admired. It almost doesn't feel real 
that it's happening to us. Students came together at a prayer service after police removed Riley's body. Outside, authorities were stopping cars and checking IDs. UGA police say they're now looking at surveillance video from cameras that they've gathered. They say that students at both schools did not have classes today, but those students will be returning to classes on Monday. David, just an awful story. We appreciate it, Steve. Thank you. Next tonight, here the suspect in that double murder at the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. Facing a judge today, Nicholas Jordan is charged with two counts of murder in the fatal shooting of his roommate and the roommate's friend. Police say they found the gun he allegedly used and an AK-47 style assault rifle as well. A court document says just last month, the suspect had allegedly threatened to kill his roommate if he was asked to take out the trash again and that school officials had been told. Meantime, there is a desperate search tonight for a missing American couple from Virginia disappearing in the Caribbean. Their boat found abandoned with, quote, evidence of apparent violence. Authorities say the boat had been stolen. Here's Victor Akendo. Tonight, a desperate search for a missing American couple after police say three escaped prisoners stole their yacht off the Caribbean island of Grenada and escaped to neighboring islands. The family of Ralph Hendry and his wife, Kathy Brandle, from Virginia, say the couple who lived on their catamaran, named Simplicity, were last seen by a fellow boater entering a restaurant on Sunday afternoon. Monday morning when the gentleman woke up at 6.30 in the morning, Ralph's boat was gone. Police are now investigating whether the couple could have been killed. A sailing association says the boat was found abandoned with evidence of apparent violence. Three days after the couple vanished, the suspects were captured by police in nearby St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All three were already facing charges for violent crimes when they escaped a police station on Grenada and allegedly targeted the couple's catamaran. And tonight, the couple's children have traveled to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to join in the search for their parents. David? All right, Victor Akendo reporting. Victor, thank you. There's also late word tonight about a deadly National Guard chopper crash in northeast Mississippi. Governor Tate Reeves confirming that two guardsmen were killed when their Apache helicopter went down during a training flight. No one else was on board. The crash is under investigation tonight. We turn now to Russia and Vladimir Putin. And tonight, President Biden announcing sweeping new sanctions against Russia after the death of Putin critic Alexei Navalny while in prison in the Arctic. And tonight here, the terrible choice that Navalny's mother says the Russian government is asking her to make. Our foreign correspondent, James Long, reporting from inside Ukraine again tonight. Tonight, President Biden ordering the largest round of sanctions against Russia since the war began. I'm announcing more than 500 new sanctions in response. In response to Putin's brutal war of conquest. They target Russian financial and military institutions and those suspected of involvement in the death of Alexei Navalny. Russia is now the most sanctioned country on earth, but Putin's war economy has survived and even grown, bolstered by its energy revenues and trade with China. In Ukraine today, Thank you so much. Thank you. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer signaling U.S. support and trying to put pressure on Republicans to pass a $60 billion military aid bill blocked in the House. What material difference is this aid going to make on the battlefield? Well, it's winning and losing. You have the aid, Ukraine will win. If the United States abandons Ukraine, it will say to every ally, you can't trust the United States anymore. Inside Russia, authorities have reportedly given the mother of Alexei Navalny an ultimatum. A family aide says she was told she had three hours to agree to a secret burial for her son or he'd be buried at the prison where he died. The aide says Navalny's mother is refusing to negotiate and demanding his remains be handed over. Alexei Navalny's team is offering a little more than $100,000 for anyone who comes forward with information about his death. They also say they can offer safe passage out of Russia for anyone who does come forward. David. All right, James Longman reporting from inside Ukraine for us again this evening. James, thanks to you and the crew tonight. We turn now to the Israel-Hamas war, and tonight Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for the first time laying out his plan for a post-war Gaza. Netanyahu's plan would give Israel control over security, but subcontract control of civilian affairs to local officials and create buffer zones along Gaza's borders with Egypt and Israel. Palestinian leaders quickly condemning this plan tonight. When we come back on this Friday evening in New York City, the urgent manhunt for more than a dozen suspects after violent attacks in Times Square. Also, this health alert tonight from the CDC about the norovirus sweeping the nation and what they're seeing here in the Northeast. And just in tonight, the first image after this landing on the moon and what we've just learned about the lander itself after that nail-biter of a landing. 
Tonight, police here in New York City are searching for more than a dozen suspects wanted for two violent attacks in Times Square. Police say a 17-year-old who they believe is a migrant from Nicaragua was chased and stabbed near a shelter on 42nd Street. Two hours later, a 28-year-old man was kicked and beaten outside the nearby Hard Rock Cafe. Police making multiple arrests in both incidents. The victims are expected to recover. So far, police don't believe the attacks are related. Tonight, a horrific crash claiming the lives of three members of the University of Wyoming swimming and diving team. The victims were killed while driving on Highway 287 in Livermore, Colorado, near the Wyoming state line. Police say their SUV went off the road and rolled several times. Five people were in the vehicle at the time. The driver and another passenger survived. The school releasing a statement tonight saying they are heartsick over the tragedy. And tonight from California, word of a horrific head-on collision in Madera County near Fresno. Authorities say eight people died when a van carrying farm workers collided with a pickup truck. Seven people in the van and the pickup driver were all killed. Authorities believe the truck crossed the center line, hitting the van. Police say most of the victims were not wearing seatbelts. When we come back here tonight, the CDC health alert this evening about a nationwide spike in cases of this highly contagious norovirus, where it's now hitting hardest. And then the landing on the moon, the first image is in tonight. And what we just learned happened to the little lander. To the index and tonight, new numbers from the CDC show an increase in norovirus cases across the country, the highest number of cases in the Northeast. Health officials say the number is especially high in New York City and Philadelphia. It's spread through direct contact with an infected person, touching contaminated services or consuming contaminated foods or drinks. Doctors reminding everyone tonight the importance of constantly washing your hands. Tonight, tourists are flocking to a temporary lake in California's Death Valley National Park. The recent atmospheric river with its torrential rains reviving the lake in what's normally the driest place in the U.S. Tourists enjoying the water before it disappears, they say likely in the next couple of weeks. Beautiful images tonight. When we come back, the big landing on the moon, the first image just in, and you'll see it in a moment. Finally tonight here, the landing on the moon. Tonight, the first image just in. And what we just learned about the lander itself, now on its side. Gio Benitez, again tonight. Tonight, the stunning first image being sent in from the lunar lander Odysseus, nicknamed Odie, taking this photo six miles above a crater near the moon's south pole. Odie touching down just minutes before we came on the air last night. Congratulations, I am team. Tonight, we've learned Odie hit a rock during landing, ending up on its side caught a foot in the surface and the, and the lander has tipped like this and we believe this is the surface the the orientation of the lander on the moon incredibly the majority of the payloads on board Odie still working along with its communications and that landing almost didn't happen just two hours before touchdown Odie's laser navigation system failed was not intended to be the primary landing system on this. The team quickly creating new software in just two hours, putting an experimental NASA laser system into action. The lander taking an extra lap around the moon, allowing time for that last minute switch. Then Odie finally landing on the moon's south pole. So, David, the next big question now, why aren't we seeing more images? Well, they tell us that unlike the Apollo missions, Odie is on the dark side of the moon, so it's very difficult to get images back from there. But, David, they say that Odie is trying. Okay. Well, we can relate to Odie on his side. Uh, Gio, thanks for that again tonight. <laughs> thanks for the first picture from Odie. I'll see you on Monday. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.